Good morning. It is Thursday morning, October 10th. It was just verified by my lovely assistant, <laughs> Joya. And uh, she is spending the morning with us and we love, she, she is the description of her name. She is a joy. And so we love having her here whenever we can get her. So everybody, you can say hi to Joya. Hello. And, and she's so lovable. And we, we do love it. She's easy to love and we do love her. But I told her I'd even love her if she lost her temper or did other things. But it wouldn't matter. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a beautiful, crisp day this morning. It's 34 degrees here. And uh, so I went ran over and... Uh, to pick her up and I did go out without a sweater or a jacket, but I had my car started ahead of time. So it wasn't super, super cold. There was ice on the windshield and uh, it's okay. Like, uh, it's okay. Um, where I'm happy and healthy and whole. Um, but this morning I have a confession to make and I already talked to Joy about it in the car. And um, last night, this is October 10th, uh, 2024. Last night, Hurricane Milton hit Florida. And I, Stephen and I have many people that we know and love that live in Florida that we care about. And, um, and I was on my feet a lot yesterday and my legs hurt and I was tired and I didn't even fix supper until like seven or 7.30 and it was real simple. And and um, I'm just I'm explaining my life. I am, there's no excuse for this. My sister's visiting and yesterday was one of the first days we actually just to go out, got to go out and and um, did, went to some special places. And, and, um, and then, um, we have an adopted Ukrainian son adopted by heart and uh, he's a truck driver and he came in yesterday and so he was here and um, he they didn't tire me out my choices tired me out and my legs hurt and I crawled into bed at about 8 30 and uh, my leg hurt and so I got into the position that felt comfortable and immediately fell asleep, like immediately. And this morning I woke up and I started looking at the pictures of the devastation of Florida. And they weren't even current, they were early on. And um, I was so comfortable. I just crawled in bed and fell asleep. And this morning when I woke up, I felt like, um, and this is a conviction of the Holy Spirit. This isn't guilt. I felt the equivalent of when Jesus said to the disciples in the garden, can't you even just stay awake for a little while with me? Can't you just do it one night? Can't you just do it one night? Why wasn't I interceding on their behalf? Why? Because I was tired and I climbed into my comfortable bed while they were fearing their very lives, perhaps. And it didn't feel good. And so I listened to a man that I really love. He's a little bit hard to understand. He's South Korean, has a very strong accent, and his name is John Cho, if you wanna look him up. Um, he's, he's a good teacher strong believer and um, he has a uh, he doesn't call it a church it's a I think he calls it like us like a worship center or training center something like that and um, in Texas I believe it is and I listened to him this morning and it was so refreshing and at the end this was the Holy Spirit too he said do what you can do do what you, where you are at in your growth in the Holy Spirit. Do that and be faithful. Don't back off the level that you're at. Don't, like if you're, let's say you're in second grade. Don't run out of the second grade room and run back to kindergarten. Don't do that. 
But if you are at a certain level in the Holy Spirit, do, and it brought peace to my heart. Because you know what? I could have stayed awake even for, I was telling Joya, even just one line of prayer or five minutes of prayer or an hour of prayer. See, we can go to the gym and we can just do a workout that we are comfortable with or we can push. And so if I had, I, I'm doing what I need to do for my spiritual muscles, I'm going to my spiritual gym, but I could have pushed last night. Last night would have been a good night to push. So I'm not going to feel guilty, but I was challenged by the Holy Spirit. And that is what the Holy Spirit is all about, is uh, it was uncomfortable. It didn't feel good initially to have this, um, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I didn't hear the Holy Spirit's voice, but I he's inside of me and I felt what was going on so I felt like I was being sat down and he was looking me in the eye and saying well Claudia this is what you did and next time I would like to see you do extra credit next time I would like to see you add five pounds to the weights you know and so I pray that this broadcast is that becomes that to other people that you will be challenged to add five pounds to your spiritual weight that you will spend five extra minutes in prayer that you haven't done that you would read a, a, an extra chapter in the Bible or if you're not good at that, listen to it. Or if you're not even good at that, listen to one verse over and over again until it like it, it burns into your memory banks. It is there. So it just it's just a challenge. The Holy Spirit is challenging us. But and and so uh, that is kind of like my confession. And confession with peace at the end of it. You know that I want to urge you brethren, my brethren, brothers and sisters, I urge us to do more. So anyway, um, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to, I'm going to be reading out of John 14 today. It is this, it, it, the, the John 14 is the equivalent of the Sermon on the Mount for the Holy Spirit. Like it is a long, a long, a lengthy teaching and message from Jesus about the future, about our future, what our future can look like. So we're going to go to John 14, beginning with verse 12, and we're going to read several verses because this is vital. This is so important. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that's how much power dynamite power is in the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, dwells in us. That is scriptural. I don't have the chapter and verse, but that is scriptural. Look it up yourself. Scriptural. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and I. It's in me. Last night when my legs were hurting, why didn't I get up and jump up and down in faith and say, Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead can certainly heal and take this pain away out of my legs. Why didn't I do that? I said, no, I just I wanted to curl up and roll up in a ball in bed and get that comforter pulled up around me. And that's wonderful. But there's a better way, a stronger way, a, more high, a higher way. John 14, 12. Jesus said, I assure you, most, this is Amplified Bible. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you. Okay, so what's he saying here? I apologize. I just don't about wiping my nose, but I don't. I'm very finicky about that. I assure you, 
most solemnly I tell you, very great emphasis. <clears throat> and I want you to pay attention to this. If anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be, a, they will themselves, he or she, will be able to do the things that I do and they will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Here it says, okay, I want you to pay attention. This doesn't say if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will do even greater things than I do. This says, if you steadfastly believe. This doesn't say, if you love me, then I will come to you and you will do greater things. This doesn't say, if you know me and I know you, you will do greater things. This says, if you steadfastly believe in me. It sounds good, right? It is good, but... This is an explanation of why some people will come before him on the day of judgment that they are judged and they'll say, but Lord, Lord, look what I did in your name. This is a principle. If you steadfastly believe in me, you will be able to do even greater things than I did. So number one, here's the foundation. Believe, believe steadfastly. Don't waver. Don't quit. If you be, if you're believing for, um, that's what I didn't do last night. I didn't stay praying, and I didn't, and I quit. I went to bed, and I quit. But if you're if you're believing for salvation, for a father, for a family member, for if you're believing, don't quit. God's at work behind the scenes in ways you don't even know. Don't quit, steadfastly believe. If you are believing for a cancer to be healed, we have a dear friend uh, named Cheryl, so precious. Such a, she, When she walks in the room, it's like light is walking in the room. And she has uh, cancer of the blood, I believe. And and we, I know Saturday we prayed over her, and I know I felt the healing virtue in me, like I could barely stand up, and I put my hand on her. I know she was healed, but both she and I, we need to steadfastly believe and stay there and live there and don't move, don't waver, don't don't quit believing that she is healed. So steadfastly believe. And you, and you will do even greater things than what I did because I go to the Father. And I will myself grant whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father, so that the Father may be glorified. Somehow or other, whatever we ask, it needs to bring glory to the Father. The Son loved and honored and respected his Father so greatly that he wanted every word to, that he said, every action that he took, it was all pointing to representing his Father here on earth. The Father has to stay or doesn't. It chooses to stay. The Father is in his kingdom. He is the king of his kingdom, and he stays in his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. He is on the throne there. The earth is a territory and a colony for heaven. So Jesus came and uh, released the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the governor that represents the king of glory here. So Jesus was here just to show everybody what the king was like, what he thought, what he wanted to do, what he wanted to accomplish. That's why Jesus was here. So if you saw Jesus, you saw the father. So he said, if, if I will do myself, whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father, that's all he wanted, was the Father, the Father to be glorified. And we can't do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. So that's why we need the Holy Spirit. And we'll get into that. I will grant, I myself will grant to you whatever, if this is all over again, this is important. He's repeating it. First he said, I will myself grant whatever you ask in my name to glorify the Father. Yes, Yes, he's repeating. I will grant 
for myself, whatever you shall ask in my name, as I'm representing all that I am, and I represent the Father. If you really love me, now he's already saying this. He hasn't given any qualifications except believe steadfastly in me. He hasn't even said anything about loving me, uh, keeping my commandments. Now, so that, that was, the promise was believe steadfastly in me and you will be able to do greater things than I have done. So pay attention. We want all of it. We want the full message. We want everything that Jesus says. Not one verse, not two verses, not a snippet, not a line. We want all of it. So he said, it is speaking to the disciples, anyone who is a disciple, anyone who wants to follow after Jesus down through the ages, and that's us. If you really love me, you will keep my commands and obey them. And I will ask the Father and he will give you, I will ask the Father and he already did, and he will give you a comforter because this world is a mess and we need comfort. I needed comfort last night. A counselor, someone to advise us because not every answer to our prayers is in here. The count, we learn about the counselor in here, but if we need to know, should we buy a new car? Should we change our job? Should we move? We, that's not in here. We need a direct communication with the Father to know what is best, what God wants for us and for our future. That's the counselor. A helper, he helps us. He intercedes on our behalf when we don't even know what to pray for us or for others. An advocate, a legal representative, a legal representative we have in the kingdom of heaven to go before our Abba Daddy Father. He strengthens us. That's what I needed last night. Our strengthener, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in us. And he stands by us, our standby, that he will remain with you forever. <clears throat> not a minute, not when you're good, not when you're bad, forever. When we do things that aren't pleasing to God, <clears throat> good morning, David. When we do things that are not of God, we simply come and say, helper, counselor i need your help right now i need your help i need your help to overcome my flesh the desire to do something that is not right i need your help and once again steadfastly believe if it is a sin that you repeat and you don't want to steadfastly believe that the holy spirit your helper your counselor your intercessor your guide that he will help you overcome your flesh don't quit believing it's on its way. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. We are going to have enemies, people. We should not have enemies because we are mean-spirited. We should not have enemies because we are judgmental. We should not have enemies because we use the scripture and the Holy Spirit and Jesus to hit, punch people and say, you awful person, you. Everybody is going to get a backlash from that. We need to present the gospel of goodness, how good the Father is. Do you remember the parable? And there was uh, three men, I believe. <clears throat> I think there was, uh, they were given, maybe it was four, <clears throat> 10 talents, five talents, one talent. Maybe that was it, 10, three, 10 talents, five talents, one talent. That was an, uh, a financial amount of money. I, and I don't know what that is equivalent to in our day and age. And so um, one used it, invested it, and, you know, like got 10 times, I don't know, a large amount more than what they were given. Another one invested it, uh, spent it, whatever they did, started a business. I don't know. They doubled what they had. And then one of them took took it and buried it in the field. And you know what he said when the master who had given that loan or, to them or that money gave that to them? And you know what he said to the master? He said, 
I know you can be a cruel master, so I buried it so I wouldn't lose it. And the master was angry. God is not cruel. It is the goodness of God that brings people to repentance. And how much, how many times have we heard or seen, witnessed ourselves, people talking about, you better believe God, because if you don't, you're going to hell. Why aren't people saying you would not believe the incredible love of God? It, the, it's so deep, you can't see the bottom, so wide, you can't see the edge, so high, you can't see the top. Why would you turn your back on a God like that when if you do turn your back on him, you will end up in hell? You can still talk about hell, but begin with the goodness of God. Begin with the love of God. That is what the Holy Spirit is there for, to reveal to us how good, how great, how kind, how much better life is with him. Uh, so I do not leave you as orphans. I'm going to, I will come back to you. But meanwhile, you have the Holy Spirit. Um, at that time when the, you'll know for yourselves, I'm in my father. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and will reveal myself to and in them through the Holy Spirit. Love him. Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, he will keep my words, obey my teachings, and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home and abode in them. We will live our spirit, our essence, who we are, all loving, able to forgive anybody and everybody, how God sees the world. We will see the world. We will not hate. We will not resent. We will be healed. Our past wounds and uh, hurts to our heart, they will all, we'll be able to see them through the eyes of God and how much he wants to show his love to us. He will live. I want to read this again. If a person really loves me, he will keep my word and obey my teachings and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our special dwelling place with him, with them. You will look different. The world will see you. Some people will hate you. Some people will be drawn to you. All moths are drawn to the light. Some of them fly into the light and they're burned and killed. But anyways, that's another story. I have told you these things while I am still with you. The comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will cause you to recall and will remind you everything I have told you. My peace I leave with you. My own peace I give. I bequeath it to you. It is your inheritance. Not as the world gives. The peace that the world gives, it, it comes and it goes. But the peace that God gives stays with you forever. No matter what your circumstances are, shalom, peace in the midst of chaos, you are in the center and in peace. But the things around you, the, the end, in the end times, the end of days, it says that that terrible things will be like birth pangs. And just before you give birth, there is pang upon pang upon, push upon push upon push. It, it just keeps going and going. You heard me tell you I'm going away. Now I've told you this before it occurs. So when it does take place, you may believe and have faith and rely on me. I will not talk with you much more. For the evil genius of the world is coming, but he has no claim on me or you. He has nothing in common with me. So there are people that he does have in common with. Those people will be our enemies. Hey, Alma. Welcome. So there are people and there is a great divide. And, and it's, 
here in many places already, but it is happening here in the United States, a great divide. For me, I want my face to glow with the life and presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't want people to look at me and see darkness, but the people that, that you see that have darkness in them, they might hate you, but be good to them. Show them the goodness of God, especially when they hate you, especially when they are mean to you. I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know and be convinced that I love the Father and that I do only what the Father has instructed me to do. I act in full agreement with his orders. I act in full agreement with his orders. That is what the Holy Spirit is at work in us doing so that we can act with his orders. How do we know who is ready? Who is who has been primed in their secret place, in their bedroom? Maybe they have been weeping at night and crying and saying, God, if you're out there, please show me. How do we know who that is except the Spirit tells us? So then when we go to the bank or we go to the grocery store or we go to the department store and then the Holy Spirit says, oh, go over and talk to them and ask them if they want prayer. And they're ready. I asked somebody once, there was a man in, um, at the grocery store and he, they were, I was arriving, getting out of the car and they, he was getting ready and going in the car and he was uh, and like an invalid or infirm. He, I mean, he could drive, but I think it was his back was doubled over. He looked horrible. And so I just said, I got out and said, hey, hi, how are you today? Uh, um, would you like prayer for your back or whatever it was? And, he, and his wife was sitting in the passenger seat and she leaned forward. She said, no. I said, just a quickie you know I, I tried three times i wasn't i wasn't mean or persistent or anything but i gave her them three opportunities and he wanted to i could see it and i should have laid my hand on him or something but anyways he wanted it hey patty and she said no and so god's a gentleman the holy spirit's a gentleman but it's still you know i did it the seed was there. The seed is in their heart and their memory. So who knows? You know, maybe next time if somebody approaches them, maybe they'll say yes. Or maybe the man will be by himself and someone approaches him. And then maybe he will say yes. But she was dark and she didn't want anything to do with the light. And it might have been uh, wounds. It might have been church hurt. It might have been from, you know, other things. So anyways, today, right now, uh, I want to pray. I'm going to get, if you do, if this is a stumbling block for you, turn away, turn it off. Cause I'm getting ready to pray in the spirit. And, um, I just want to pray, continue praying for the devastation of hurricane Milton. And if you would join with me and we'll just pray in the spirit for rescue operations, for the safety from winds, debris flying, everything, you know, we'll just put it all in the hands of God. Okay. Kuhura namaka shatara namaka etiana kultor. Tora namaka etiana nakatara namaka etiana kultor. Tora naka etiana nakatara nakatara nakotor namaka eti. Namuku otor namaka etiana nakara namaka shatara namaka eti. Tora namaka shatara namaka etiana mukuru nakotor namaka eti. Anaka atana nakatur naka shatara namaka etiana katara namaka. while I was praying, this is for those of you who are still wondering about praying in the spirit, praying in the heavenly language. I was praying, first of all, for the Holy Spirit to clean out my heart from all sin, to forgive me for being too comfortable last night and not praying. And I felt just such a, 
a glorious forgiveness and peace. And then I prayed for the people in harm's way. And then I prayed for the rescuers, the, the first responders, because there was a, a large building. I've already seen this. There was a large building and the roof was blown off where they were waiting to for the storm to abate enough so they could go out to start helping people. So the very building they were in, the roof was ripped off by over like maybe 115 mile an hour winds, something to that effect. And so I was praying for their protection, that God would put his arms around them. Because in the, in the scriptures it says, no greater love hath man than this, that he would lay down his life for another. For another. And so first responders, they whether they believe in God or not, they are living out the greatest love that can be revealed on the face of this earth. And so I, they have a special place in my heart. So yes, yeah, so when I was doing this, uh, I was praying the arms of God would surround them and protect them. And then just worshiping God at the end. So you can know what you are praying and god has given me that ability but so i am uh what do you call that interpreting what i'm praying but i just pray that we will continue to join together praying in the spirit praying out our future what does god want us to do who does god want us to go and touch our lives to go and touch what does he want us to be thinking about what does he want us to be feeling and don't forget steadfastly believe today because you will get results. So God bless you. And don't forget to keep praying in the spirit throughout the day. I love you guys. Bye.